Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about Saint Makeup. So many of you over the last couple of years have requested that I test out this makeup. Now this is a brand that was formerly called Mascara, so you might know it more under that name, but it was recently renamed as Saint Makeup. And so I finally caved and purchased eight tins, eight pans of their various products, and I have been testing these out. And so I'm going to share my thoughts on them as well as a demo. So if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. Now, just some brief information about the brand and about the actual products you're going to be seeing me apply. The mascara brand was renamed Saint by its founder, Kara. Now, she is a makeup artist and she originally started mascara brand because she wanted to redefine and simplify kind of the average woman's beauty routine. And she wanted to create a way for the average woman like me, like you, to create that kind of contoured, perfected look on the face without having to go through lots and lots of products and also to be able to kind of enhance your natural beauty. So she didn't want to create something that makes you look like you have a cake face of makeup. Now, how does she do that? Well, she created cream products. They all come in these metal tins. When you get them initially, they have a metal tin lid like this that you slide off and then you can put them in a magnetic palette. They sell the magnetic palettes. This is one of them that has actually two layers. So I bought a collection. I think it's an eight collection. It gives you a reduced price and a free palette, all that good stuff. But the idea with the cream textures and kind of her philosophy is that you have highlight shades and color correcting and then contour shades. But these are all formulated with coverage in mind. So as you'll see in the demo, you're not putting on a foundation all over your face first and then going in with contour and highlight and all of that. All you're doing is actually putting a contour, a highlight, and then additional coverage in the areas where you're not contouring or highlighting. And that in and of itself as a whole is going to provide your full face of coverage. That sounded pretty interesting to me, but I thought this might prove a little challenging. So more thoughts on that as we go and at the end. But the other part of the collection, she also developed blush shades that you can use on your lips, bronzers, some glow shades. Uh, these have not really glitter particles. They're a much more kind of wet sheen on the skin. And as far as the ingredients go, liquid paraffin, petrolatum, beeswax, and then something called ozocarite wax. I think I looked it up, it's mineral wax. So, so that just kind of gives you a little idea of how these feel kind of when you put them on your skin. Now, the other thought she had as far as the cream texture is she felt like creams give you the ability to have kind of go from very sheer coverage to buildable full coverage, but also create more of a second skin look so it doesn't look like you're wearing lots of makeup. And then also these products are supposed to have a silky application and provide a buttery velvet finish. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the demo and then be sure you stay to the end so you can hear my final thoughts. For skin prep today, I did not want to add any additional coverage under this foundation so you could get a true picture of how it works. So I used the Paula's Choice Hydrolyte Shine Free Daily Mineral Complex this is moisturizer and SPF for normal to oily skin. And then I just put in one drop of the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy Drops because this can have just a tiny little bit of a white cast. So that's all I have on my skin right now. These are the four shades that I chose for coverage portion. So this is the contour shade. I will list down in the description box what the shades are so you can know for reference. But this is the contour shade and then you'll see kind of three lighter shades. This I chose as my highlight, this as my color corrector, and then this as my main shade. So as I've been testing this out and watching lots of tutorials, 
I'm going to apply it the way that I feel like works the best for me. And then we'll talk more about this at the end of the video. Okay, so I'm going to start with the color corrector first. And you do not want to get too much of this product. So I'm just going to put this in the areas that I know I need extra coverage slash color correction. So here under the eyes and I am using all synthetic brushes. I didn't purchase any of their brushes. I did purchase their sponge, which I'll show you in a moment, but this is the Real Techniques Expert Concealer Brush. And I'm using a smaller brush just so I don't get out of control, <laughs> get too much product. And I'm going to Put a little bit of this here on my nose because my nose is extra red. So I want to kind of combat that redness. I need extra coverage here. So just gonna go around the face and apply this in a few areas where I need, where I would typically put concealer, but we're doing this first before our foundation step. So this is going to seem a little strange and a little out of ordinary, <laughs> but hang with me here. Next, I'm gonna go in with contour. I just personally feel like this is easier for me to do it this way. So I'm gonna go into the contour shade and I'm going to just put this in the areas where I want to contour, but I'm not blending it out. And you can do a brush to apply it, or sometimes I just feel like it goes a little faster with my fingers. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a coverage product. So the contours, the highlight, this color corrector, these are coverage. So it's almost like I'm just applying a darker color of foundation in these areas. So that's what you kind of need to look at this as, because we're not gonna go on top of this with anything else. This is going to be our coverage in those sections. All right, next I'm gonna go in with the highlight shade. I just feel like it's easier to do the darkest points and the lightest points and then fill in in between with the main shade. So I'm going to place this everywhere where I would normally want a little highlight. Keep in mind, this is not a shimmer highlight. This is just a lighter color that is going to lift the areas where you place it. So I'm going to place a little bit here, in the center. So usually for me, that's kind of the center part of the face, the tops of the cheekbones, and then definitely under the eyes. I'm gonna go back with that brush on the other side, place a little bit of that on the inner corner here. And maybe a little bit here, the brow. This is going to look increasingly strange. <laughs> oh dear. This is like painting class, you know? Okay. And then everywhere else where I don't have a stripe of anything. I'm going to go in with what I consider my main shade and I'm going to go in with this Sedona Lace angled brush. This is a pretty dense brush but this is what I'm also going to use to kind of help blend the edges of things. So this is the Sedona Lace 602 and I just find that the shape of it fits nicely in here. Now again I'm just tapping the brush in there you don't want to really fully swipe because it is very pigmented. So I'm going to place this above, below the contour, and around the rest of the face. Okay, 
Okay, and now I am going to do tapping motions to go over those sections where I have contour and highlight and just try and gently blend all of those colors together, but I'm not swirling because I want that contour to stay where it is. I want the highlight shades to stay where they are. I'm just kind of really pressing and just, just ever so slightly. So just kind of tap, tap, tap up. Okay, and then I feel like I just need a little extra coverage under the eyes. So just gonna go back the tiny little bit of the lighter highlight shade and just tap a little bit of that in the areas where I think I need a little more coverage. I think I'm pretty well blended and covered. Now you can see I do have a little additional glow, right? After putting that on. So it's definitely not going to dry down to a matte finish at all. So I am gonna have to powder, but first we gotta go in with the rest of the cream products. In my little palette, I ordered the eight collection. So it has two layers. So under here, these are both lip and cheek products. This is a bronzer and then this is one of the glow products. So even though it looks dark, you can see there's a sheer quality to it. The same goes for the bronzer. The bronzer product is not coverage, so I can put this over the top of things and it's not going to add an extra layer of foundation per se. But first we're gonna go ahead and start in with the blush. All right, this is a pretty kind of peachy pink shade. And I'm gonna go in with my Luxie 522 brush and just kind of tap that in. So you can see that's really nice. It does provide a very buildable coverage. I don't feel like these are scary pigmented at all. So I'm going to add a little more than I think I need because one of the final steps, by the time you add powder and kind of take off the excess product, I feel like you can sometimes take away a little bit of the pigment. So I'm going to make sure I apply a good amount of this. And I do almost feel like you kind of need to do a combination of your finger and a brush to get the best color payoff. Next, I'm gonna go in now with a little bit of this bronzer shade. I'm gonna try using that same Luxie brush with the bronzer. I don't know that I've actually done that with this particular product, but I'm going to go right over the blush and just add, and I'm gonna kind of blend it down towards that contour shade. And you can see it's just adding a nice little bit of extra warmth. And then what one of the artists that I watched loves to do is she loves to mix that shade and the glow shade right next to it. And that does make a really pretty kind of finish to the top of the cheek, but you gotta make sure you don't get too much. Whoa. Okay, easy there, okay. Take my oh, foundation brush, kind of like an eraser here. That's why I kind of like to keep this brush free of product, of color product, so you can go back and kind of blend things in. All right, we'll add a little glow here. Okay, looking pretty sunny, glowy. I'm gonna go back to the face part and use a little bit of the highlight shade. I'm gonna go right around the edge of the lips here just to kind of conceal the edge of my lips. Now this will not prevent your lip 
product from bleeding or anything like that. It's not like a MAC soft ochre paint pot or anything, but it's going to provide just a little bit of a concealed look around the lips. Now, I have seen one of the artists use one of these darker shades around the edge of her lips as her lip liner. I think she may have used this bronzer shade. So that's what I'm going to do today. And then I'm going to fill in my lips with the cheek, lip cheek colors. So first going in with the color we used for our bronzer. And you're going to have to use some kind of lip brush or eyeliner brush for this step. And then I'll go in with that cheek color and apply that to the lips. And now I'm going to add this kind of glowy, this is the glossy shade that you can also use on your cheeks, but <laughs> I don't need any help with gloss on my cheeks. So I'm just going to place this on the lips and kind of give the lips more of a glossy look. Okay, at this point, one of the artists would say that this is the most crucial step and that is to go in with their sponge. This is their sponge, damp but fully wrung out and I've even wrung it out in a towel so it's damp but it's not wet. And she says it's crucial to go over everything and remove any excess product and then set it if you're going to with powder. Otherwise, it will reduce the longevity of wear and will make the makeup look more cakey. So before I go over it with the sponge, I just wanna get up close so you can see how it looks. Um, I will say the coverage looks pretty good but, and hopefully you can see on camera, um, I have a lot of pores and texture and it's really being accentuated right now. So I'm gonna take the sponge and we're gonna go over just half the face and just tap over everything. And so I am just tapping. I am not rubbing or anything and in a moment, I will show you what the sponge looks like. Okay, you can see less glow over here and you can see quite a lot of makeup taken off. So as I look up close, I don't know if you can tell, it's removed coverage because you know we're wiping away excess product but um, I'm already seeing a little bit of redness poking through there on my nose so um, this is kind of what this looks like compared to this side because we removed a little bit of the glow I don't feel like it's quite as textured looking per se but it is I don't know it, it's not exactly smooth. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and go on the other side now with the other side of the sponge. Okay, so I've gone over the whole face. My sponge has quite a lot of excess that it removed. All right, so here's up close with no powder. So now I'm going to powder my face. I'm going to go in with one of my current favorite powders. It is from Beauty Counter. This is a completely translucent powder, so it's not going to add any coverage, but it does for me, usually with foundation, a good job of blurring the pores and smoothing the look of the complexion. So there's half of the face done. That definitely improves the look of the pores here. Still seeing some texture here, but let's go ahead and finish. Okay, I've obviously finished the rest of my makeup and my hair. So in the 15 to 20 minutes or so that that took, let's take an up close view. 
All right, I have not touched at all my face, my nose or anything. And I think you can already tell there is pink and kind of redness showing through on the bottom of my nose. And I don't feel like I have a ton of redness. I don't have rosacea or anything. And then under my eyes, you can see kind of creasing. It's settling into the lines, even though I set it with powder. But the biggest thing for me with this is I mean, do you see right here what's going on? This makeup makes me look like I have double, we'll call them dimples, but it looks like, I mean, it's highlighting texture right here. So I just feel like the texture of the product is actually highlighting texture on my face. And in my experience in the past in wearing this foundation, I feel like that only gets worse as time goes by. I will insert a picture of the last time that I applied this foundation, this whole makeup, and you can see what my face looks like. And this was only after, I believe, maybe about two hours of wear time. Now, the other thing on my lips, that cheek color on the lips, it's not drying, but it's also very oily, slippery feeling like I can't wait to take it off kind of thing. So... What are my final thoughts on this makeup? Well, you might have already guessed, it's not a win for me. And this is going in my dead pile. Why do I say that? Well, it's not a bad product per se, but I feel like this is one of those makeup products that if you have perfect skin and you have younger, fresher skin that doesn't have texture, you don't have large pores and don't have a lot of deep lines, I feel like this might work well for you, but on my 46 year old skin that has large pores, texture, I have lines, like you can see it already settling into my forehead lines and I powdered. So it was as good as it's gonna be as far as setting goes. I just feel like this is just not a texture that works well for me. My skin, it doesn't feel super heavy, but I can tell I have makeup on. So it's not a super lightweight feel. I can wear my KVD foundation or my Bare Pro foundation, and those give me impeccable coverage, and yet they feel like I'm wearing nothing on the skin. Those also last so much longer on my skin than this does. The other aspect of this product is, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is supposed to be a product that simplifies your foundation routine, simplifies the whole beauty routine. I am sorry, as somebody who has worn makeup for 30 years, I don't find this a very easy product to use. Now, the Saint Artist that I have watched on YouTube about this and tips of applying, and I'm trying to figure out how to do this, I've watched a number of her videos and I just found it perplexing that something that is supposed to be so simple to use requires a video that's an hour and a half long to explain how to use this on mature skin. So those are kind of my overall thoughts. I don't wanna be negative about the brand, about this product. I know several of you have said you use this and you love it. I am so happy to hear that. And I know there are a lot of people that do, but for me personally, I feel like there are much better coverage products, better wearing products and easier to use products out there. And so this sadly is going to be one of those products going in my dead category. I hope this video is helpful for you, even though it may not have turned out as you thought it would. I hope that for those of you who were interested in this brand, that I gave you enough information to help you determine if this is something that will work for you or not. Check the description box below for information on everything that I use today, all of the colors, as well as what else is on my face and my nails and all of that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.